Hey guys, it's Daniel with Teach Kids Robotics, and today we'll be talking about why do robots use QR codes, an introductory explanation to fiducial markers and Aruga codes. So, if you've been seeing robots in the news lately, you might be noticing a lot of QR code looking objects nearby these robots. For example, Miso Robotics has Flippy, the French fry making robot that seems to be using a lot of these QR code looking objects around its system. For mobile manipulator arms, there are also QR codes seen. For drone deliveries, there are QR code like structures on the ground. And for the Agility Robotics Digit Robots, there are these QR code looking objects where they're going to be delivering their supply crates. Even in stores, for BrainCorp robots, we are seeing these QR code looking objects. But what are these objects and why are they so frequently used in robotics? Let's find out. So these are not actually all QR codes. First, in the last slide, there was only one actual QR code. All other images were actually Aruko codes. Now, what is an Aruko code? First, the name is derived from the University of Cordoba in Spain, where the Aruko library was initially developed. The C++ library allows detecting and recognizing square markers, also known as Aruko markers or Aruko codes, in images and videos. Now, these Aruko codes are a specific type of fiducial marker, which in robotics is primarily used to provide reference points that robots can use to determine their position and orientation relative to the markers and to calibrate cameras. Now, we're going to learn about why this is important in robotics in knowing where you are, knowing your pose, being able to localize yourself. So, Let's first talk about properties of fiducial markers. There are different fiducial markers that exist, but Aruko are commonly used in industry. Now, what makes one of these markers important is that the appearance should be unique in all orientations. For an example, consider if there was just a two by two grid below and we used a black square to make a unique marker. If we had two such markers labeled one and two, and rotated them 90 degrees clockwise. Now, our marker two looks like marker one and marker one looks like marker two. This would be an issue as we need to be able to identify the exact orientation of our marker in order to understand how the robot and the camera is oriented. This is why all Aruko codes are actually uniquely shaped such that regardless of orientation, they have a unique visual signature. But what are Aruko codes used for? Why is it important to have that unique visual signature? So the distinctive feature of Aruko codes is that each code contains that unique pattern that can be easily identified by computer vision algorithms. And by being easily identifiable, it means it doesn't take a lot of computing power in order to identify these objects within the image and allows us to identify them quickly. This allows the robots or other devices equipped with cameras to accurately determine the pose, the position and orientation of the camera, of the Aruko code relative to the camera. By detecting multiple Aruko codes within the camera's field of view, the robot can then localize itself within the environment by calculating the camera position relative to the codes. And this act of localization means the robot knows where it actually is in space relative to the markers that it saw. In the image below, you see some of these Aruko codes printed out on a table. And actually, we can see with the red green and blue lines, the relative axes by which the orientation is adjusted for the codes. And by looking at the degree differences in orientation of these codes, we can build an understanding of the angle at which the camera is looking at these codes. And this in turn tells us where the robot that is looking at these codes is in space. So how is this done exactly? 
by using the geometry and the physics that we understand in photography and computer vision. Consider you were looking at a chessboard straight on. It would appear flat, a two-dimensional grid. But now, if you were to look at it with a camera that was offset at an angle from either the left or right side, suddenly this flat 2D grid appears to you at an angle, at a slight diagonal. Now the reason for this is due to how the angle of the camera is now adjusted relative to the angle of the flat checkerboard. Because we know the geometric distortion expected, and we know the original image, for example, we know what a checkerboard looks like looking at it straight on, or we know what the Aruko marker looks like when we look at it straight on, we can use this geometric distortion to actually calculate the angle that the camera is looking at the given image. This angle in turn allows us to know where the camera and where the robot is relative to the given Aruka code, which is useful again in knowing where a robot is and localizing a robot. Consider you have a mobile robot that is moving around in an internal representation map of the world. In this picture below, you can see a mobile robot in a hallway, the real world, and you can see the 2D representation, the cost map that it has, where it has the entire map represented with space that it believes it can move in and space that it is bounded between. How does the robot know if it were to just turn on in this hallway, where in the hallway it is? It would need some kind of proof, some kind of confidence in where it was in its map. This is another place where Ruko codes can be useful. By placing an object in the environment, in the map, that guarantees it's only located at a specific spot, if the robot sees this code, then it knows in its entire map where it is in space, and it allows itself to localize, to know where it is in real life and where it is in its map accurately. So, how are these codes actually detected from a computer vision perspective? On the left side, we have the breakdown of the process in which we get an image that has our RUCO codes at a potential angle and allows us to actually determine which code is where. First, a technique known as adaptive thresholding is used to find the borders of the image. At this point, we don't know where the codes are. We then remove small borders with only a few points and simplify the shape of the borders to only rectangles with four corners. This begins to limit where we are searching within the image for our code. We then arrange the corners of the rectangles in a specific order and remove rectangles that are too close from each other. This allows us to differentiate the rectangles located within the code and the entire code itself. Finally, we remove the perspective distortion to make the rectangle look straight, allowing us to identify the internal code of the marker. As you can see on this reference image at the bottom, we have a unique code associated with each of these Aruko codes. And if we know where they are in space ahead of time, our position relative to all of these specific codes allows us to determine where we are relative in space. So, did you know about Ruko codes going into this with regards to robotics? I sure didn't. I thought they were the same as QR codes, but after learning a little bit more and understanding why our Ruko codes exist, what makes them unique, and how they're really useful to robotics, it was really an important revelation, and it's great to see now how many different robotics companies are using these Ruko codes. If you have any other questions regarding these codes or any other topics you'd like investigated, feel free to leave a comment in the description below. Thank you.